Going to get started. So I'd just like to welcome everybody um, for coming today. That's awesome that you guys could show up and be here and kind of be here for a little tour of the Dairy Learning Center. Um, my name is Molly Sayers. I'm a second year student in the Animal Science Technology Program here at Lakeland. Um, I'm originally from Ontario and decided to make the big move out west. And so far, I love every single second of it. Um, basically, how I found out about Lakeland was I was scrolling on Twitter one day and saw a post about them and thought it would, would be a fantastic idea um, to come out here and experience the school. So I came for open house and I applied and then I, I got accepted for school and I've been here ever since. So I'm currently in my second year um, in the dairy major and those majors are new as of last year in 2019. So there's um, a dairy major, a beef major and an equine major. Um, so you can choose one of those. And basically uh, what it does to your program is in your first year, your classes are very general, um, but when you have labs, they're all in person and they'll be tailored kind of towards your major. So equine labs, maybe you'll do horse handling, dairy labs, you'll come out here and um, learn how to, to work within the flight zones of dairy cows or do needling and things like that, beef cows, learn how to put them through a processing chute, things like that. Um, so that's new as of last year and it's actually been pretty neat so far, um, just because we've been able to actually do things that are tailored towards our specific major. So that's been pretty sweet. Um, a couple of things that I'd just like to mention before we get into an actual tour of the barn are um, when you're in your second year and you're in the on the SMF dairy unit um, in particular or any unit it could be beef or equine you're always out doing things so for the dairy kids we're always out here in the barn um, learning new things uh, working with the herds people and the manager um, we're milking we're working with the robots we're working with the feeding system um, we're, we're doing calvings things like that um, we also have in-person labs. So I know a bunch of schools are shut down because of COVID, but at Lakeland, we have um, our classes are kind of split between online and in-person. So a bit of blended learning and our labs are all in-person. So we're all out here. We might have to be masked and have gloves on, but it's still very much worth it to be out in the barn. Um, we do lots of hands-on learning here. Like I said, we do have industry come out. Um, last week we had Nutrisource come and do um, a cow signals uh, presentation with us. So we did kind of like a workshop and a couple of their representatives came out and told us how to evaluate cow comfort in the barn. So that was super neat. Um, we also had West End come one day and we talked about genomics and testing in our herd and reading bull proofs and things like that. And then afterwards we made a bunch of very big decisions on what we were gonna do to change our herd genetics. So there's a lot of things happening in the barn and there's a lot of opportunity for learning. Um, we. We definitely learn a lot of things um, about production and herd management and feed management, um, agricultural sustainability, and most importantly, how to operate within a mixed farm setting. So this isn't just a dairy farm. We also have uh, the beef herds on campus and we work with the crops people as well. So we kind of feed off of each other, which is super neat and really cool compared to any other um, college or school out here. Um, we also do lots of research um, within the dairy barn. So we're currently working with industry and some university collaborators. Um, we're working with the University of Alberta and Calgary right now and we're doing milk fever trials, we're doing dry cow treatment trials as well as um, estrus detection trials too. So those people are out here in the barn working with us too. So it's and there's so many opportunities for us to learn and do research as well which is super neat because that's not really something that you would do just working on a general farm. So this is a great place to learn. Um, a couple of things about first years, because that's what you guys will be. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for you to be out here as well. There's student milker jobs. Um, you can milk in the parlor and learn how to do robot chores. Um, you'll be here with your labs for handling class. Uh, you'll be here working with the cows all the time. You're welcome to come out whenever you want as well. The second years are usually here a lot. So that's awesome for you guys. You can come whenever you want really. And Dairy Club is here too. So we do a lot of things 
within the barn and outside the barn. Um, when COVID wasn't really a thing, we did a lot of industry stuff. So we'd go and visit farm tours. We go to webinars and things like that. And those are still happening um, mostly virtually, but we're still doing a lot of neat things in the dairy club. So that's something that first years can try as well. So um, since we're gonna get started with the actual tour now, I'm just on top um, in the mezzanine in the dairy barn right now, and I'll flip my camera around. So this is just a little overview of the barn. So up top here, um, this is where we'll have our SMF meetings. You can see our chairs are kind of set up and we also have our whiteboards and calendars up top. So this is where the second years will meet twice a week to have our meetings and discuss what's going on in the barn, what needs to be done. On this side here, you see our parlor group. So in this barn, um, it's very unique because we do have a parlor system and a robot system, uh, like a, a robot milking system. So this is our parlor group. And typically these cows are our late lactation cows. Um, they're older, they're not giving as much or their teat placement isn't, isn't really quite right for the robot. So that's where these guys go. Um, and we usually milk between 65 and 70 cows on this side. Um, they're milked twice a day, uh, brought into the parlor, usually one person milking. Um, and that's what student milkers will be trained to do is uh, be trained on our milking procedures and things like that. So moving over here a bit, you can see our Lely Vector doing its feeding right now. So he's feeding the, the parlor cows and we'll talk about him a little bit later. Um, if I move over to this side, you can see just down there, that's our parlor or our robot group, sorry. And this is our robot room where the DeLaval milking robot is. So those cows can voluntarily go in. Uh, you guys know what I'm talking about with that. Um, on this side, this is our pack pen or pack area. So this, these pens, and we'll discuss these later as well. Um, this is for our fresh and sick cows. Uh, the, the end pen here is for our close-up cows and we can adjust pen sizes depending on how many we have in the barn at one time. And then just down in the corner here, you'll see we have our maternity pen or like a sick cow pen. If there's someone that needs urgent treatment or something, we can just throw her in there and, and look after her. So, um, that's kind of just a little overview of the barn. And um, I'll head on down to the parlor right now and we'll kind of work our way through the barn from there. Um, just a little reminder, if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat or in the question and answer section. Um, I do have a, a friend here answering questions and he likes to be kept busy. So make sure you ask questions and he'll not be afraid to answer them. So we'll just head downstairs right now. We'll go out kind of into the barn here. So we'll walk down to the parlor area. Just behind this big shop door is like our pump house. So the one part of the tank is in there, all the pumps and things like that. And then we'll head in here. This is technically the milk house, I guess. So our tanks in here. Um, our roster as well. It's kind of a bit of a different system just because we do have uh, two milking in. It's actually pretty neat. We do have a calm floor, so it's adjustable depending on how uh, tall the milkers are. So if you're taller, you can have the floor as short as you need. And if you're shorter, you can have it as tall as you need, which is pretty cool. Um, if we walk back here, can kind of walk up here and go see. We do have a crowd gate for pushing up the cows as well as there's a sort gate just off to the side. So if you need to sort off sick cows or someone needs to be treated, something like that, uh, move to a different group, then you can sort them out through the sort gate just by pushing buttons on the, in the parlor on each cow. Um, the head gates are, it is a, a De Laval champion double eight parallel parlor. Uh, the head gates are rapid exit straight lift, which is pretty neat. Um, our foot baths are here and here on either side. And we do have a bit of a different foot bath protocol. So we usually fill um, the foot baths with water. And then we do have a plastic foot bath tub just off to the side that we'll fill with a, a copper sulfate solution. And the cows will go through that three times a week. And then we'll do our wrapping if cows have other lameness issues, which is pretty neat. So I did see, somebody said they wanted to see how the crowd gate works. So Hamish on the other end is gonna push it forward. So I can see, so basically you just push a button in the parlor and you can watch the, the gate move forward. So all it does is when you're pushing cows, 
into the parlor. Um, this gate just kind of helps you, so you don't have to come up and chase cows all the time, which is pretty neat. So you can push it back now. And then yeah, when you're done milking, you'll push it back, which is pretty cool. If there's any other questions about milking, feel free to ask. I've seen there's some on there. So definitely lots to learn today. So yeah, just automatic moves back just by the push of a button and it's fairly quick. So you don't, you're not wasting time. So we'll head back this way. Down here. Um, with the parlor, just because it's De Laval, um, we also have the Dell Pro computer software. So that'll help us um, with just monitoring cows, product, things like that. Uh, anything else I need to talk about with that? I don't think so. So now uh, we'll kind of move on to the robot. Let's go back through here. And we'll do a little walk through of the barn. I said earlier, this is our maternity pen. These are our close up cows. And I'll talk more about them after we go through the robot. I guess while I'm here right now, I could probably talk about our ventilation systems and lighting. So the barn is kind of run by a, um, like a Maximus ventilation system. So there are curtains on either side of the barn and it's a little difficult to see right now, but they are up just because it's a little chillier outside, um, but they're temperature controlled. So depending on how windy it is or um, what the temperature is outside, they'll move up or down, letting more air in just so that the cows are comfortable at all times. Um, the, the Maxima system also controls lighting in the barn. So we do have uh, daylight settings on right now. This barn is very bright. We have a skylight system which is great with chimneys um, for increased ventilation. Um, but the lights at nighttime, there is a nighttime setting. So they'll, only a few lights will stay on and they'll be at a dimmer, dimmer setting so that the cows do get some downtime, which is pretty nice. So we'll head on to the robot. Let's go in here. So this is the robot room. And we'll step down here. So right now it's actually just let a cow out, but that's okay. You guys kind of know how the robots work. So um, our robot here is Laval VMS, and it's also equipped with herd nav. Um, the herd nav monitors mastitis, uh, progesterone levels for heat, and pH levels for keto as well. Um, it also has uh, an OCC, an online cell counter. And I'll just head in here where it's a little bit quieter for you guys. So this is our herd nav right here. Um, it also has an online cell counter, which is the milk and smells in it. So it'll alert us for potential flare-ups of mastitis and things like that. Um, with the progesterone levels, it'll also alert us um, if they're pregnant, if they can, um, the progesterone levels different. If they're pregnant, it'll let us know, and if they're in them. So I'm just going to head through here. So we are back at our pack area. Like I said, I was going to talk about these. So this right here is our um, fresh cow or sick cow pack. The fresh cows usually stay here for three to four days just for colostrum collection and sick cows can be here as long as they need to get better and for treatment and things like that. This is our close-up cow pack. Um, heifers are usually moved from the, uh, the dry cow pasture uh, four weeks pre-calving and then cows are about three weeks. So a little bit different. We found that there were some issues with heifers after they calved, so we decided to move them in a little closer and put them on their different ration a little bit sooner. So after talking about these guys, we can get started with our calves. And I'll actually, there's, we'll go back down here. The hutches are back down this alley. So our newborn calves are kept in individual hutches for three to four days where they're fed uh, bottled colostrum from their moms. And if it's not uh, good enough for them, we do have dry colostrum that will unfreeze for them. 
It's pretty awesome. So we do have a couple of guys in here right now and they're just waiting to get moved into group housing. So once they're finished in these hutches, they do get moved into these calf rooms. So we have three calf rooms. Two of them um, are hooked up to the automatic calf feeder, which is a DeLaval CF1000, which is just in here. So it'll be filled up with milk replacer and it'll just mix milk for them as they need it. This is one of the first rooms. So our babies are in here and they kind of just hang out in here. They're fed calf starter and hay and they're also entitled to about nine liters a day. Um, we do put them on a step down program to minimize cross sucking, which is pretty sweet. We have had some issues with that in the past. So with the step down program, um, it works out fairly well. It minimizes sucking pretty good. So those are our smallest guys. And then in here, there's no calves in there right now, but that's the exact same type of room, which is pretty sweet. And we'll head in here. These are our oldest guys. Um, so they're moved in here. We usually keep about 10 calves per room. We try to keep it at that. Um, they're, so the, so I forgot to mention the other calves are on a milk program for about 60 days. Um, I already said they're entitled to nine liters a day, but these guys are in the, this last room for about three weeks and it allows them to climatize to the outside is then they're, they transition to a heifer shed outdoors and it's it's fairly open. So it gets chilly in the winter time and this allows them to get used to those temperatures. So they're fed a heifer protein pellet as well as hay and they're off milk at this point. So they're just chilling in here. Literally, it's pretty cold. So we'll move on to the feed system. That'll be our last step. And I'm actually gonna have to switch over to the other phone right now because I think my phone's gonna die. That was poor planning on my part, but I'm gonna switch over to Tyler's phone. Oh no. First settings. Privacy. Have to go to. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. Hopefully you can all hear this still. My phone died. That was very poor planning on my part. So we're just heading back to the feed system now where we'll talk about the vector. I saw a couple comments about it um, and Hamish was talking to you guys. So 
we'll head back here. I'll flip my camera around. So we do have a Laley Vector feed system and it does feed delivery and push up. Um, with the comm boxes, each one is for a certain ingredient. We did find that by keeping alfalfa hay in its own comm box, it got fairly dusty. So over the summer, we kind of switched it and we mix our barley silage and our alfalfa together now and that minimizes the dust and the cows like it a lot better. So the cows are on a, a PMR ration with the vector. Um, the parlor cows get uh, their concentrate pellet in a concentrate feeder just that they can walk into and it reads their ear tag and sees how much they're entitled to. Um, with the robot cows, it feeds it to them when they're in the robot. So we feed corn silage, barley silage, alfalfa hay, and then like a, a dairy cow supplement, um, which is pretty awesome. The vector usually goes and checks for feed, does push up every 35 minutes. Um, and it does feed about 12 times a day. So the cows always have fresh feed in front of them 24 hours a day, which is super awesome. So if there's any questions, any other questions about the vector, please feel free to ask. Um, we do feed or we do fill the comm boxes manually with a skid steer. Um, usually every day in the winter time, we can do it every three to four days. It just depends on how fast we use the ingredients. Um, we are disturbing the silage from outside in the pits. Um, so it's a lot easier uh, for us in the winter time because it doesn't get hot. In the summertime, the silage will heat up. So we do have to fill it every day to make sure that we're not putting too much in at one time and that it heats. So that's kind of what's going on in the feed kitchen. And we'll head over to the manure separator, which is on this side of the barn. Um, for manure system, we do have jaws scrapers. Um, we just had the chains replaced this summer, so they're working pretty awesome. In here on the robot side, we did talk about foot bath on the parlor side. This is our foot bath for the robot cows and they get pushed around. We'll close gates and push the cows around twice. So they end up going through the foot bath twice, three times a week, same as parlor cows. And over here, is our manure separator. In the tour that I did this morning, it was working. Uh, right now it's been turned off. Um, but we don't have, with some barns, you can get the option of having kind of like an incinerator and it heats up the dry manure that's separated out and you can use it for bedding. Um, we don't have that yet, but it's definitely something that could be looked at. So this is kind of what it looks like. The farm team did take out some of the manure this afternoon, but there is some here. So it'll separate the liquids, which end up going into a lagoon um, just out past in the field by the dairy barn and then this stuff is the dry and we do take it out, put it in a pile and our custom manure haulers will take it out after that. So those were kind of the last things on my list to talk about. Now we'll go see what time we have. We do have quite a few minutes so we could go outside. We're gonna go show you guys. Yeah, we're gonna go show you guys the heifer shed and we'll also go and show you the, the feed commodity sheds out back as well as the silage pits. So you guys can see that. We did silage this summer. Um, we tarp them and threw tires on them. We do have corn silage and barley silage at the dairy barn right now. And our commodity sheds are where we put our alfalfa hay, straw, shavings, um, straw for feed and bedding, sorry, and things like that. So we'll go out and show you guys those. And on our way, we'll answer some questions. I'll turn this around. What are you feeding? So I did answer that question. Um, for the, the close-up cow story, it's a Goldilocks ration. So straw, corn silage, and then a dry cow supplement. Um, dairy cows or lactating cow story are on a, a PMR with corn silage, barley silage, um, alfalfa hay, and a dry cow supplement as well. So and they're, it's working pretty well. We do have a nutritionist that comes out and the SMF students are, they do work with him, um, which is pretty sweet. So you get to, you get to kind of make choices as well. Alrighty. We'll just go outside to the heifer shed now.
unmute and we'll start the video. Okay, so turn this around. So this is our heifer shed. So drive by. So we do have about eight groups. Um, the pens on the left start with the youngest calves. So these guys just came in from the barn out or from the barn inside uh, from that third room that I was talking about and each pen uh, we kind of organize just by age and how well they're doing. So um, they get fed um, once a day and they get a uh, like a TMR mix kind of corn silage, barley silage, um, hay, and then a, a supplement or mineral as well. So that's what they get. There's salt blocks in there and automatic water bowls. We'd have to check in the winter time. Those are these guys. So these end pens are our breeding age heifers. Uh, we try to keep them organized so that the last two are heifers to be bred, um, as well as heifers that are pregnant. And then those heifers that are pregnant will get moved to our dry cow pasture um, once, uh, once they're old enough. So we'll go check this question and answer. Um, do we like the vector? Yes, sorry, I kind of bypassed that, que that question. Um, yes, we do, it does work. Uh, fairly well for us. It has been having some technical issues lately, but those are nothing that's not too difficult for us to handle. So, um, but it, it does really well. It keeps feed in front of the cows all the time and it's fresh feed as well. It's always missing, mixing a new batch, which is uh, pretty awesome. So we're outside. Uh, this is at the back of the dairy barn where we keep all our feed. So this is our barley silage pit. We just opened it. Um, we did this silage early August and this is our corn silage. This stuff was done um, about last year at this time. Uh, yeah, it would have been at about this time. Um, and here's kind of where we keep some of our straw and hay just for the farm. It is a mixed farm, like I said before. Um, so we do work alongside the beef units and the equine units um, to kind of to kind of get things done on the farm. So we have our alfalfa comm shed, our straw comm shed for feeding, straw for bedding, and then our wood shavings pile for bedding in the inside the dairy barn. Any other questions? Sure, so as we drive by, I'll kind of show you guys the actual dairy barn. So we'll flip this around again. So this is just the back of the barn. The hangar doors here on the right end are where the comm boxes are. So those fold up and we can easily fill comm boxes from there. These are our mash bins. Our feed trucks usually come every two weeks just to always keep those full. Here is where I was talking about the curtains. So you can see much better that they adjust for the temperature out here. So it's a little chillier out today, kind of snowy. So they're they're up just to kind of keep the heat in. That was a concentrate bin for the parlor side. And that's our parlor right there. You can see the lights are on. This is the front of the dairy barn. It's got dairy learning center on the front. And you can see our parlor has big, big bay windows in it. So you can see outside, it lets light in very nice. It's, it's very well lit, it's nice to work in. Same here, door for the milk house. Earlier when I was doing a tour this morning, the milk truck was here, so he picked our milk up today. I didn't look to see how much we shipped, but we're around the 8,000 liter mark. It's just the, the office. So inside the barn, there's a classroom. That's what these windows are. And that classroom gives us space. With COVID, we're only allowed to have about 10 people in it, um, which kind of sucks, but we do utilize it to the best of our advantage. Um, we'll go in there and have kind of one-on-one -on -one meetings and things like that. So it's actually super nice to have a little classroom that we can have classes in. There's TVs so we can do lectures and things like that too. So we'll just walk back in the barn here and I'll say a few more things. Again, there is an office space. Again, like I said, um, we are only allowed so many people in it at one time. Our vet room is in there too. Um, so it does kind of make it difficult to have only a few people in it. Um, a couple other things that I wanted to mention. Um, like I said, there's lots of opportunity for students to be in the barn at all times. The SNF students were always out here. We're always doing things. We're always learning new things. Um, our faculty and SMF advisors always say the barn is yours. Um, you get to make decisions. Um, you get to try new things. We are on a budget. Um, there is a finance manager. So uh, one of you next year will have to be that person 
that kind of organizes the budget, sees what we have, what we don't have, and what we are kind of eligible to do, I guess. So just walking down the barn, the vector's running right now, and he's just pushing up feed on this side. He recently fed the parlor cows, so he'll be going to push up their feed too. So like I said, he goes around every half an hour to push up feed, make sure that it's nice and close to the cows to reach. He'll be scanning their feed right now and guaranteed he'll be coming back to the feed kitchen to make a mix for these robot cows. See, there's a question. Do students get to do outside events and industry interaction? Yes, so because of COVID this year, um, we're fairly limited. Um, last year, the students got to go to the Western Dairy Seminar, which was super awesome. They got to network with industry, do things like that. We're very much encouraged to do that because that's what you'll be doing. Some, some of you will be going to go back home to work on the farm. Um, some of you will be going to work in industry and it's, it's a very, it's a nice skill to have, especially when you go out into the real world, I guess you could say, um, is knowing how to actually network with people and connect with them um, as they're marketing their products for you or marketing themselves, right? Their help for you. Um, this year, uh, what have we done so far? We've had industry come to us. Um, I did mention before that we had Nutrisource come out last week and a couple of their reps did a, a cow signals presentation for us. So we did get to evaluate cow comfort in the barn. Um, and we had WestGen come out and they did a genomics presentation. So they talked about genomics um, and testing, how to read bull proofs, um, things like that. We do um, labs in the barn. We did uh, labs on KPIs and understanding KPIs. We got to make KPIs for the barn and those get presented to industry. Um, one more thing I should mention is when you're in your second year um, on the SMF dairy unit and any unit actually, beef units, equine units, we all have to do presentations. So uh, we do mid-year presentations and final presentations. SMF is a class that you do year round. So you have it each semester um, and you do these presentations and it just kind of shows you, um, it shows industry and the staff, um, our deans, um, faculty, SMF advisors, what we've done so far. Um, have we met our goals? Are we making new goals? Um, are we reaching those goals? And what our budget looks like? Are we going over budget? Are we under budget? Are we breaking even? Uh, kind of what's going on. So those, those presentations are heavily evaluated. They, they're kind of like our exams for this class. Um, a couple other industry things. We did do, I'm not sure if you guys have heard of DRECA, which is the Dairy Research Extension Consortium of Alberta. They came out last year and did a presentation for the second years and the first years. It was a, a big industry event. So there were lots of uh, researchers there. There were teachers there, professors, um, things like that. And they talked about, um, we evaluated our barn. So we talked about nutrition, uh, production, uh, what to do with foot disease and, and lameness, things like that. So there's, um, there's lots of option for us to go to industry. Um, this past week, I actually just got back from the Westerner Dairy Showcase in Red Deer. We were, uh, we made a proposal and we were allowed to go to this dairy show and we took five heifers that we believed were some of the nicest ones out of our heifers in the shed. Um, got them all, all done up and everything and took them to the show. So I just came back to do these tours and the team's doing really well down there. And that's another option for us to, to network with industry. So there's lots of opportunity and you can, if you're not finding that there's enough opportunity, you can come up with things and say, hey, why don't we try this? And that's when in your SMF class, you make a proposal, you'd write to the Dean um, of Agriculture and say, um, this is what we would like to do. This is how it would benefit us. This is how we'd make our money back, um, things like that. So there's, like I said, tons of opportunity for you to network within the industry. So are there any other Last minute questions. I only have about 10 more minutes on this, on this Zoom call. Um, trying to think of some other things to say. When it comes to working with the other units, uh, we're constantly doing that. One of the positions on the SMF team is a mixed farm manager. So they'll meet with the mixed farm manager from the crop program and the beef program and the equine program. And they'll talk about feed. What do we need for feed as a farm? Uh, what 
for the crops? What do we need to grow next year? Those are some things that they're deciding right now. Um, one of our biggest ones was, what are we gonna do for silage? Are we gonna do corn silage, uh, barley silage, oats and peas? What, what do we think? And then the students get to make those decisions. They'll go through um, and they'll say, okay, this is how much it's gonna cost. This is how much we're gonna, we're gonna need. How much do we have? And they make decisions based off of that. So in, in reality, we are the ones um, kind of founding the decisions that are made here. They do have to be approved. Like I said, we make a proposal, but it's pretty neat that you can make real-time decisions like this. When students leave this barn, all they have are, are good comments and things to say about Lakeland because it taught, it taught them so much about how to actually um, work within the real world, right? When we have bulk halves to sell, the students are the ones that make the call um, to, the, to the buyer and say, hey, do you need these? Um, we're the ones that truck the heifers to the auction mart to sell them or sick cows or, or not sick cows, but uh, any cows that are culled, things like that. So we're the ones uh, making the decisions. Um, what else should I talk about? I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys have any other, any other questions or need someone to talk to, you can always contact Alan McMillan. Um, you'll find his contact on the, the Lakeland College website. He's our academic advisor. Um, and he's, he's always available, always answering emails. If you have any kind of questions about the program or what we do within SMF, feel free to contact him. You can also uh, find some answers on the website um, and follow our social media too. You can always follow the, the Lakeland College Dairy Unit. You can follow the Lakeland College Egg Sciences Facebook page, um, anything. Uh, we're always posting about what we're doing and it's kind of neat to stay in touch, so. Anyways, that kind of concludes our tour for this afternoon, I think. So if you guys have any questions, um, don't hesitate to contact somebody, um, or email the college or Alan, like I said, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. And personally, I hope to see you guys next year. I love it here and I hope you guys will too. So on that note, we'll end the tour and I hope you guys have a wonderful afternoon.